awache eswati ni tv sibu bose maswati you know what makes christmas so special it's that little extra and at spa we have thousands of extras we're granting thousands of christmas wishes and giving thousands of our customers free shopping plus thousands in christmas savings like baker's choice assorted biscuits for only 89.99 and brooks oros range for just 29.99 spa the home of a thousand little extras this christmas Get quality and style gift wrapped for you with the D5 323 liter metallic fridge for only 599 or the Hisense 536 liter French door fridge in stylish stainless steel for only 1999. Bradlow's quality and style you can afford. Hi-Fi Corp where Santa shops for the best deals. Get this Unova 36 liter microwave oven with stainless steel finish for only 1699. Or get this Lenovo Intel Celeron 500 gig notebook with 4 gig memory for only 5699, save 300. Or catch the action on this Hisense 55 inch Smart Ultra HD TV for a low 8499, save 500. Price is valid from 2 to 24 December. Hi-Fi Corp, your everyday deal destination. T's and C's apply. Good evening. This is Eswatini TV News Bulletin at 8, read to you by Notsile Sitole alongside Zamanzi Manze. First, let's have a look at the headlines. The Deputy Prime Minister says His Majesty the King wants to see all child-headed families fully supported by government and other stakeholders. The US government has donated 1 million US dollars to the Kingdom of Eswatini. The Minister for Commerce says government is working towards introducing business lessons at school level. And now the news in detail. The Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu says His Majesty King Mswati III wants to see all child-headed families being supported by the government and other stakeholders. Masugu was speaking at Egutseni during the launch of the Child-Headed Household Family Project at Engambule Homestead. Child-headed families are 1,834 so far in Eswatini, and those children live under harsh conditions of poverty with no one to look after them. As a result, the government of Eswatini has launched the Child-Headed Household Farming Project aimed at looking after the welfare of child-headed families. Speaking at Egutseni area, during the launch of the project at Nkambule Homestead, The Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masogo says every parent, neighbor and traditional leader has the responsibility and duty to ensure that these children are looked after. He says as an office, they've been tasked to get these children and ensure that they are well looked after wherever they are. The project here itawubuka bona labo nje lesesibabali. Khona ngethi ukuthi njalo ngesikhathi sikufuneka libhaka ngoba sekungena indzaba emapaka life. He says this project that they are launching they will make follow ups to ensure its sustainability the minister of agriculture Chablan Mabuza says they welcome this initiative It is government's directive to have these projects launched around the country. Tsine sibona nje kuphumelela nekusekeleka kwe strategy zeltiko. Ngiko ke sitya sizathu setinawujabuleli umsebenti walo luhlobo. 21 year old Langeli Hlenkambule who stays alone in the homestead and is also a student at Skombeni High School passed his appreciation to government for such projects. He says Life is tough for him. When there is nothing to cook and eat, he would go to school on an empty stomach and come back home with nothing to cook. Sometimes I'm over there, you know. The same of the best pizza I could. Moba, eh, in Zimbabwe, we are school and we 
the Deputy Prime Minister then pledged the construction of a two-room house for Langeli Hle. A popo tree was then planted as well as maize. For Iswati TV News, I'm Kiyanim Sibi, Egutseni. The United States of America has donated 1 million US dollars to the Kingdom of Eswatini to bolster women's economic opportunities in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. The assistance will be for three years and has been received by the Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu, who was represented by the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumalu. The financial assistance has been announced by US Ambassador Lisa Peterson. Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu says this one million US dollars assistance will be available for a period of three years. Masugu was represented by Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoma Kumalo, when receiving this amount. This is the highest amount given to the Women's Employment for Economic Recovery Project in the last 10 years. The Deputy Prime Minister says this project aims to address legal and cultural barriers to women's participation and to give them better access to credit and financial services. Live as a Meliga, Likipe Imali, Lemu, one million US dollars, because the world would say, Bato Akai Matfuba, M. Sebenti, Futsi Nekutfuga, Kwabo Magi, Sia Chabula Kulu, where would say, Lom Sebenti Lona. Lemina Missabenti, Lata Kunjula Mayo, Ambassador Peterson, Moba Gulemina Limits Hatfu, Gutabe Lolusha Lulu, Lucebenda, Lukichima, Logus Chablisa Kulu Futu Gutsi, Logune, Lokta Wendua, Mule Mali, Gulu Lusha Lulu, Wutsi, Lubuge, Mshaumbe, Insa Lagase Aboma, Ubuge Lugu Wutsi. Bapatsega njani, baniketo njani, matuba, bapigelega njani, biznesi ni. U.S. Ambassador Lisa Peterson says this is the last financial assistance she will be announcing in the country before she leaves for her home country on Sunday. This is the largest package of bilateral assistance that we have offered to Eswatini outside of our very expansive PEPFAR programming in more than a decade. And it's directed toward a really incredibly important issue, which is women's economic empowerment. This project will provide tools and resources to empower more women to participate meaningfully in the economy. At the moment, it has not been said how many women stand to benefit from this assistance. The goal is to provide tools and resources that will empower more women to participate meaningfully in the economy. For Swatini TV News, Chamgosima Vimbela, Babani. Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumalu, says government is looking into entrepreneurship being included in the local basic education curriculum. The minister says young people aspire to own businesses as opposed to being employees. Kumalu said this at the Junior Achievement Company of the Year Expo, where he was represented by the Minister of Sports, Culture and Youth Affairs, Harris Bulunga. Today being Thursday, Junior Achievement held its Company of the Year Expo. JA Board Chairperson Noguka Nyakamedze has thanked schools that have committed themselves to the JA program as it is not part of the curriculum. Head teachers are so committed that they do provide some time for these young people to explore their future what they can do, what they are capable of doing. Speaking on behalf of sponsors, Mfusele Lofagutze says the JA competition creates future entrepreneurs who will take the button from them and further play a vital role in the local economy. Just to also encourage the government to consider bringing entrepreneurship into the school curriculum because 
there is no doubt that our, our children can benefit a lot from practicing business very early. Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Mangoba Kumalo, says government is looking into entrepreneurship studies for young people. Kumalo was represented by Minister of Sports, Culture and Youth Affairs, Harris Bulunga. Entrepreneurship should be taught from a very young age. It is unfortunate and it's something that we've noted as a government that our young people only think about entrepreneurship once they fail to get employment. And by that time they lack the necessary skills and the necessary endurance for such businesses to thrive, which as a government is something that we are working on addressing because it is also a one of the challenges that we face under our youth fund, uh, youth enterprise fund uh, program, where we give funding to young people to start businesses, but most of these businesses don't thrive because of the challenges that these young people have. The minister says government supports JA and has shown this by its over 3 million Malangini contribution to the program since 2014. He says government will continue to support the organization even in the future. For Swatini TV News, Temgosima Vimbela, Mbabane. The principal secretary in the Ministry of Tourism and Environmental Affairs, John Klaupe, says it is important for the Maloloja community to ensure that the project, which, is, which seeks to fight environmental degradation, is a success. Klaupe was speaking on behalf of the Minister of Tourism and Environmental Affairs, Moses Villagati, when launching the Maloloja Integrated Landscape Management Plan. The Ministry of Tourism and Environmental Affairs has launched the Malolo Jai Integrated Landscape Management Plan and the document which will guide those parts of the project in ensuring all activities are executed well. Speaking on behalf of the Minister of Tourism and Environmental Affairs, the Principal Secretary John Lopez says this project is of great importance as it aims to solve problems which affect the environment. He says the ministry is dedicated to support the Maloloja landscape project as they implement objectives outlined in the document. It further aligns with multiple international agreements that the country is party to, including the Convention on Biological Diversity, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and the Convention to Combat desertification. The Swatini National Trust Commission Acting Chief Executive Officer Club Silas Kwasana says this initiative will benefit over 320,000 people and bring development in the area. It's a time when we are looking at a different approach to conservation. The chairperson of the Maloloja Landscape Association Management Committee, Jerry Ngumalo, gave assurance that the project will be a success. Which is a clear uh, implementation plan. The Ministry of Tourism and Environmental Affairs says government alone cannot fight problems affecting the environment, but with communities and Emaswati working together, the kingdom will reach its goal of being part of countries that have eradicated environmental issues. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Temalang Nlaminut Musim Konda, Malolocha. The Motor Vehicle Accident Fund Chief Executive Officer David Mieni says the new strategic plan will place customers at the heart of all operations and improve service delivery. Mieni was speaking when launching the MVA fund strategy under the theme Seamless Bold New Future during a meeting that was held at the MVA offices in Babane. To ensure that accident victims get adequate medical assistance, the Motor Vehicle Accident Fund has officially launched a new operational strategy known as Seamless Bold New Future, which is a four-year strategy that will ensure that accident victims are given the necessary attention and help. The CEO, David Mieni, says they have implemented new measures so that they can promptly respond to the needs of their clients. He says they are currently locked in negotiations with different stakeholders in an effort to improve their service delivery. New strategic plan, which we have themed seamless, bold, new future, whereby we are saying we want to place the customer at the center of all our operations. 
what we will be doing with the strategic plan is that now we will be initiating the claim process to say oh, before a claimant would come later to then lodge a claim with the fund. But now we're saying as soon as the accident happens, our staff will be coming to those people that have been involved in the accident to then help them fill in the claim form so that it makes it easier for us to quickly process and finalize. The other aspect that we will be implementing through the strategic plan. MVA has also launched a customer service center which will enable customers to report whatever challenge or seek for assistance from MVA. Reporting in Demalaga Dlamini with Muslim Konda in Babane. Christmas came early for Ezulini residents when they received food parcels which were donated by businessman Paul Friedlander. The food parcels, which amount to 250,000 emalangeni, were a part of the 500,000 emalangeni that was donated by the family to assist those who were badly affected financially by the COVID-19 pandemic. The food that was distributed to the residents of Zulini on Thursday was purchased with part of the 500,000 emalangeni, which was donated by businessman Paul Friedlander and his wife, Gemma, to the community of Zulini to help those who have been hit hard by the COVID-19 outbreak. Paul and Gemma Friedlander, speaking to the voice of George Falcoma, said they are grateful and honored to be blessed in being able to make the donation to the most vulnerable within their community in Zulini. The Friedlander says Zulini will always be their home and they are very proud of that fact having lived there for 50 years. My wife Gemma and I fully understand the difficulty that many of the vulnerable live with on a day-to-day -day basis during this difficult time of the coronavirus and it pleases the two of us to be able to assist in this small way. Ezulini Chief Sviso Kumalo said that the second phase of the food distribution cost 250,000 emalangeni and was distributed to seven areas around Zulwini. Kumalo says a total of 440 people have benefited from the food parcels. He says the food came at the right time for the residents. As we approach Christmas, hence they will have a Merry Christmas. The chief says Ezulini has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic as some people who worked in the hotels around the area lost their jobs. Uh, for the second phase. Kumalo thanked the Friedlander family for this kind gesture, which will go a long way in helping the beneficiaries. The food parcels included rice, mealy milk, beans, and cooking oil, amongst other things. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Temalang and Zamini, Ezulwini. The Commission on Human Rights and Public Administration or Integrity has launched a website which will make it easier to lodge a complaint. The Commissioner Sabelo Masugu was launching the website, will, says launching the website will improve efficacy of the organization and its visibility. As the world commemorates the Human Rights Day today, the Commission on Human Rights and Public Administration Integrity says even as Eswatini battles COVID-19, the country continues to protect and promote fundamental human rights and freedoms of all within the territory of the kingdom. The day is commemorated under the theme, Recover Better, Stand Up for Human Rights. The Commissioner Sabelo Masugu explains about the recently launched website and how it will be of help to Emma Swati. The website Im um, improves the efficacy of the Commission as well as its visibility. So we are hopeful that it will remain a found for human rights issues in the country as our reports, both which have been issued and those still to be issued, will be uploaded into the website for, the, for public consumption. It will be an information sharing platform on the mandate, the activities of the Commission, publicizing its findings or reports. Masugu says most of the complaints they receive are of evictions, which the Commission has taken serious steps to deal with taking some people to court. He says they are currently in talks with the Minister of Justice to find out of options for legal aid for citizens who do not have the means to hire their own lawyers. The Commission's website is www.chrpa.org. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Nelson Wendlangamandla with Fabris Musonera in Babane.
A very good evening once again. Now we'll take on to our sports news. Emaswati now have their own local online sports betting platform, which they can use rather than using international platforms which at times give them problems when they have to claim their winnings. This follows the launching of Mula Sport, a local online betting platform for local and international football. The gaming board says the platform is very safe to use. Emaswati will now bet in a legal and safe local online betting platform. This is through Mula Sport Betting Company, whose director Kanya Makakula says has already started operating and over 500 people are using it. The platform allows participants to bet in local and international football games. Makakula says at the moment people win as much as 5,000 Malangeni. However, they will open this up to over 30,000 Malangeni and even more. Makakula says they avail this platform after noting that Maswati are using foreign ones, which often have challenges when it is time to collect winnings. Mula Sports Uti will provide a platform. Le Tafutungele when Upeche, Pechelanguane, Pechele Mapola Sasquatland, Pechele Mapola, a Sengila and the Nomangupi, a corner map, Wangananje, La Bule website, we are corner pitch. Em Logo Busita Gutsi, Gubelula pitch, a pins of footsie. Gaming board secretary Herman Mozart says Mula sport betting is safe to use. The Melalo Lena Le Topa Mola Sport. Embeleni Seku long overture would see Vele Gubinetinga Pane, the de provider, the betting, the sorting. Nabe Sigese ever. I would see a scattered snare and my sort of man and Bega Peta and a pile of waggle. Kansa would listen as cast at Malta, but Sabui and a lot of concert when I was a slave platform like I was at Sema Sort of man. Locals can place bets through funds available in their mobile money accounts as well as Imali from as little as 20 Malangeni. For Swatini TV News, Chemgosima Vimbela, Babane. Eswatini Sports and Recreational Council Chief Executive Officer Darius Lomo says sporting associations who have not been granted permission to proceed with their activities must provide a strategic plan on how they are planning to resume under the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the local sporting codes have been given a green light to proceed with their sporting activities by government in consideration that they have less chances of spreading the coronavirus pandemic. According to Chief Executive Officer of Eswatini Sports and Recreation Council, Darius Klomo, the remaining association who have not been granted permission to proceed with their activities must provide a strategy of how they are looking to resume. And the Nalama associations, the Lamani, Langaba contact. Lomo says there is no doubt if the associations provide the strategic plan on how they will be operating, they will be given a permission to proceed. present a negative test. I'm, 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 I'm ready to hear now my presentation in the office now and take them. Klomo concluded uploading different associations who are currently in action with their activities for the continuity compliance of the pandemic. First watching TV Sports, Fabiso Msonera with Nesio Ntangamanda, Babane. The Chief Executive Officer of Eswatini Football Association, Frederick Mgometulu, says club licensing compliance among Premier League clubs currently stands at 94%. Club licensing is a program initiated by CAF of ensuring that clubs in different nations do follow development programs such as juniors, ensuring that clubs run under contract finances, ensuring that there is a training ground and many more. The program of monitoring the compliance of the clubs is conducted ahead of each new beginning of the season. 
Eswatini Food Association Chief Executive Officer Frederick Mwametul says the compliance currently in the Kingdom of Eswatini is standing at 94%. Gometuri says currently clubs are complying well. The response shows that clubs are indeed complying with all the rules being provided. Gometuri went on to highlight that the decision still stands for clubs who will not be following the rules. The new season kicks off this coming Saturday. For Swatin TV Sports, Fabrizio Musunera with Temgos Mavimbela. Zurini. That's all for now. Let's have a relook at our top stories. The Deputy Prime Minister says His Majesty the King wants to see all child headed families fully supported by government and other stakeholders. The US government has donated 1 million US dollars to the Kingdom of Eswatini. The Minister for Commerce says government is working towards introducing business lessons at school level. And that brings us to the end of our bulletin for tonight. Up next is the weather forecast. From mine and the team here at Swatini TV, thank you for watching. Good night.